Hey there, Happy New Year. Um, I wanted to share with you, this is Dr. Shi of Wondrous Works, and I wanted to share with you some information, another coachable moment on, um, as being a collector of African American art or art in general, about reference materials. I wanted to share with you, and I'm coming to you directly from in front of my, uh, if you call it bookcase, of, full of books on, on art and African American art in particular. I wanted to share with you how important I believe reference materials are to the life of the collector, the journey of the collector. Specifically, as you grow and your taste changes or your objectives for your collection changes, it's always good to have reference, reference materials in your arsenal to help you navigate through your plan if you have one, your vision board if you have one, uh, your, your list, acquisition list if you have one, your goals if you have them for your collection. And so I wanted to highlight a few books with you today. As you can see, I have in this bookcase uh, a whole, my bookcase is full of books from everything about um, art law to auctions to the history of black art to art terms to dictionaries on uh, terms in the, uh, in the various parts of the art genre, fine art genre to books specifically on specific artists and books on catalog, catalog, catalogs of exhibits uh, in galleries and museums alike where they printed catalogs of the, their various ex exhibitions from programs that I've kept, uh, from catalogs for major auctions, say at Swan Gallery, I think I have um, um, a whole, almost half of a bookshelf on all of those catalogs that I've kept over the years. So I wanted to share with you how important that is. Now to give you a little bit of history, how I started out is my first introduction to the need for me to be more savvy, to think about uh, educating, if you will, or learning more about African-American art and artists and collecting was a visit that I took to a gallery in Hagerstown just Looking Gallery, it was owned at the time by, um, I, um, a, by Eileen Berger and her partner, Bob Brookhalter. And it was interesting when I went in her office, she had one whole wall of shelves that had a lot of the same things that you're seeing here, a number of catalogs, a lot, number of pamphlets and programs and books about African-American art at that time black art because when I went to her, when I went to her my first visit to her was I believe in the 2000 around 1999 19 or 2000 so I wanted to share with you the first book the first book that I saw that was very memorable for me and I actually ended up buying the book it was it was an investment for me at the time was an investment because I think I was in uh, doctoral study at the time and so my funds were quite limited but I was really focused and at that time and enthusiastic about African-American art when I went to Eileen it was overwhelming when I went to just looking it was overwhelming because uh, that was the one place where I've never seen so many uh, original pieces of artwork by people that look like me so either or people that look like me. And so that's one reason why I was really excited. Everything it just popped out at me. And so having time to actually sit down with her and with Bob and talk to them and they really shared some pearls of wisdom with me that I take to this day. One of those things, one of those most point most important things, which is the reason why I'm sharing with you, is to to gain your resource material, really focus on your resource material. So even if you're going to an exhibit and you get a catalog, don't throw that catalog away, right? Even if you're going to a, a private showing and there's some pamphlet, don't, sh don't throw that away. I've pretty much kept everything, that um, every piece of paperwork and every pamphlet, every program, every catalog for any exhibit or uh, any private show that I that in which I participated in which I visited uh, is reflected in this on this bookcase. 
But I wanted to share with you the my first book, my very first book. So I'm going to go down a little bit, go down memory lane with you. And my first book is was actually published by the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, which is the St. James Guide to Black Artists. And I consider this book to be my go-to uh, of actually an anthology, if you will, on the various artists of that time. This I think this was published back in, I want to say this was published, let me look. This was published, I want to say back in the 90s. Yes, it was published in 1997. Uh, by St. James Press, and it actually features artists from A to Z. It's, it's, it's the anthology to me, or for some might consider it some sort of an encyclopedia of those, those Black artists that were on the scene. Um, and there were contemporary artists that are a part of this, as well as at that time, emer some emerging artists and some master artists. So it wasn't just master artists. There were artists that are included in this book at that time that were Promising, emerging, or um, really solid, uh, not solid, that's not a good word, but really strong contemporary artists of the, even during that time in the late 70s. And so this book actually, to give you an example, just includes their vita, if you will, their resume, where they where they have exhibits and, and all that, where they've been, private shows and, and museums and all of that good stuff is in this book. So anytime that I saw a piece of work that I liked <clears throat> and I wanted to know more about the artist and get a sense of where, where they've been in their journey and their career and where there's their showings of their work. I would go to the Black, um, the St. James Guide to Black Artists. At the time, I will tell you that I think I was in my doctoral study, uh, in the middle of my doctoral, st doctoral study, and so my funds were, I was on, I, I had really placed myself on a budget. The thing about that was this, this book at the time was about $200. It was almost like a textbook, the cost of a textbook for many of us that were in, in college. And I thought it was an a, a important enough of an investment, quote unquote, for me to actually acquire this book. This book is probably no longer in publication. You were probably able to get it on the secondary market. It wouldn't cost you $200 today. Uh, but as these books get more and more rare, there is a tendency for the cost of these books, the value of these books to actually increase. So this is one of my go-tos. So if you can, I think you can check on uh, ABE books or Books A Million, I don't know if they would have it, or Amazon. Any of your book portal websites may have this book available. And if you cannot find it on those sites, you know, you want to go to maybe some secondary, secondhand bookstores or even Goodwill. Sometimes you may pop into Goodwill and find that there are rare books in Goodwill that if you were to pay, actually pay for them with their worth, you would be excited about the fact that you found a real treasure in Goodwill. I wanted to highlight another one of the books that I think every collector should have. And this is, this is one that I think every collector, I know and have a number of collector friends and they have this book, um, Collecting African-American Art by Halima Taha. Um, this book I referenced a number of times as, as a collector um, because it talks about technical terms. It talks about uh, how to go about buying artwork. Where are your resources? What are some possible resources? Buy it at an auction. I kind of done, I did look at some of the same thing. I will tell you though, when I was looking at this book and I was thinking about getting into auctions and I, I even didn't remember that there was a whole section on here about buying it at an auction. Uh, this is a really go-to book, but we're going to be talking, there are going to be a lot of things that I share with you about auctioning and, and participating in auctions and, and, and avoiding some of the pitfalls of auctioning. Um, especially if you're doing it virtually, because now there are more art, there are more auction portals available online, and so you're not able to see the work up close and personal in the traditional sense. So we'll talk about that. There'll be some more 
sessions that we place online about that. But I wanted to tell you that this is one of the go-tos. Uh, most of the number of the collector friends that I have have this book in, in their library, in their arsenal, or what I call also my art war chest. So definitely, this was the second one of the most important books that I could have acquired. Um, there are a number of other books that I have on this on, on this uh, bookcase, and many of them are by David Driscoll. So he was definitely what I call, in, in, in my mind, he was the godfather of African American art. Some would consider him to be the father of African American art, God rest his soul. Artist in his own right, but also an educator, also a curator. Many of you may know that he was a curator for the Bill and Camille Cosby collection and actually um, collaborated with them on the Bill Cosby book. Um, he wrote that book, The Other Side of Color. Many of us have that book as well. So as I talk to some of the collectors and many of them that have been in the game a long time, you'll see that some of us, many of us have the same uh, periodicals, the same resources on our coffee tables or on our bookcases. I want to share with you one book in particular, for, and there's a point to me sharing this book, another book by David Driscoll. Uh, there are times when when we are, many of the books that are available that focus on African American art or Black art are books that are published and they sell very quickly. Once they sell very quickly, I think I've mentioned this before, um, you know, it's a thing of supply and demand, right? So when the supply is high, the, the, the books tend to be at a lower price point. When the supply starts to diminish and the demand is high, then that means that the, they increase in value. Simple economy theory, right? Simple economy theory. So here is a book, it's one of those things where I remember back in I think 2020, and this was after um, Mr. Driscoll had passed on, uh, the HBO featured a documentary, and I believe the documentary is called Art in the Absence of Light. And Art in the Absence of Light featured a number of different artists. I think it featured Bisa Butler, it featured Amy Sherald, Kehinde Wiley, and of course, we got to hear from Dr. Driscoll himself. This book um, is another one of the books that um, Dr. Driscoll actually uh, published. Two Centuries of Black American Art. When I purchased this book, I bought this book um, years before, years before that documentary came out. I think I purchased it maybe in somewhere between 15, 2015 and 2017. At the time, I purchased it on Amazon for about $25. Had no idea of what the value of that book would be today. <laughs> but as as I look through this book, again, it is a, it is, it is a book of um, the works of various artists uh, from the late 1800s, I would say, throughout the 1900s. This book also is what referred to as a plate book. Plate book is are like color images of the works of various artists, giving you some information about the art, the name of the work, and uh, the artist. And it may even give you information about the medium and the size. In some instances, some of these books in the in the plate under the plate under the reference or legend, if you will, will include whether it's coming from a uh, it's a part of a collector a collector's a collection, so we'll say from the collection of, or if it's being featured in a museum or an exhibition, it will give you information about that. What's interesting about this book, it's very insightful. Uh, it is another kind of go-to if you want to learn more about artists, specifically African-American master artists, Elizabeth Catlett, Horace Pippin, um, Charles White, uh, William E. Scott, William Edward Scott, James Herring. They're all different types of master artists from the 1800s and 1900s that are featured in this book. Now, what, why, why, do you, why did you pull this one off the shelf? 
pull this one off the shelf because, again, when I purchased this book, I got it on, uh, on Amazon. And eBay is also a reference for art books, right? When I got it on, when I purchased this book, I got it from Amazon. It was, it was used, but in very good condition for about $25. After the, the premiere or the showing of Art in the Absence of Light, um, went back on Amazon and this book was actually at, started out going up to, I believe, $700 in um, some $800. This book, this book, $700 to $800. In, in, some, web, in some book portals, um, there were individuals that had the books, the books, uh, secondary book dealers and, and, and so on and so forth and book um, companies actually had the had this particular book, this particular reference listed at about eleven hundred or twelve hundred dollars. So as you as I, I tell you, you know, art books are also a great collect it is like a great collectible, right? Collectible in the sense that as you acquire them at some point, they will be valued at more than your original investment. So putting this back, putting this one back on the shelf, I want to talk to you about a couple of more, um, couple more books. I have Richmond Barthay here by Sabella Lewis. Uh, there, so there is uh, the art in life of William H. Johnson, Henry Osama Tanner. So I have a number of books just about the artist, a one particular featured one particular artist in the book. Then I have a number of books where a number of artists are featured in the book. Then I have a number of books that talk about the history of African American or black art. So the next point I wanted to share is that remember I was sharing with you this whole concept of um, saving every catalog, saving every program, because I never know what would be a good what reference point for me, especially when I'm looking at value, especially when I'm looking at um, acquiring a piece, if I've been to invited to a private show, or I'm participating in an auction. When I, when I participate in auctions, I try to do as much research as I can, especially if there's a specific work or works um, in which I'm interested. And so this, this, these materials help me a lot when I'm coaching different collectors in art and, and helping these collectors develop their, their wish list or acquisition list as they begin their journey of collecting. I refer to these books a lot and also encourage and, and encourage each of those new collectors, you know, millennials and the like, um, and very, you know, millennials, um, Gen X, Gen Y, um, doesn't matter the age. <laughs> there are folks that start collecting in their 40s and 50s. It doesn't matter the age, but I do encourage all of them, like I was encouraged when I started, to, to start to build your war chest of reference materials. Now, here's the other thing. There are a number of books that, that, that Roman Bearden has written in collaboration. Samella Lewis has written in collaboration. Uh, the artists themselves have published their own books. But I wanna talk to you about the Pomegranate series. And the Pomegranate series is a series of Books that have been published, Pomegranate, and then of course this is through the David, this is referred to as the David C. Driscoll series of African American art. This is actually a series of books, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books in the series. Now, I, the purpose of you saying, okay, well, she, what's the purpose of me sharing? What's the purpose of you sharing about this series? Because this is one of the series that a number of, of my collective friends have, and this is what the this is one of those series that's getting more and more rare. It, it's becoming more and more rare to get the entire series. There may be one or two that are available, still available out there for purchase, not on the secondary market. But many more and more of these books are becoming rare to find, especially in brand new, um, crisp condition. 
So I wanted to share with this one with you, Charles White, um, um, the Pomegranate series. Each it, but it's a part of the David C. Driscoll series on African American art. Um, they have Betty um, Betty Sars also featured in one book, Charles Austin in another, Marchbald Otley in another, Faith Ringgold in another, uh, Margot Humphrey in another, Huey Lee Smith in another, and Keith Morrison in another. I will share with you that these books start out being about maybe $30 to $35 each. But now that they many of them are sold out, they're going for as much as $100 in brand new as a brand new book. So when I say think about the art books also for reference materials, but they're also collectibles. I have I myself uh, in, in providing coaching coaching services to many new collectors have acquired additional copies of books and have those available for sale. So if, if you're looking at, well, wait a minute, maybe I should um, buy a, a, a second copy of a book. Every time I buy a book, then maybe just keep it because eventually I may be able to pay for that book two or three times over and the book that is a part of my, that I'm keeping as a part of my library. That's some smart thinking right there because that's truer than you actually know. So the Pomegranate series is another go-to, another must-have. Um, uh, I will, you know, I would pull out David, uh, uh, Jacob Lawrence's resume, catalog resume in his life, in his art and his life. It's a two book series. That book is really, those books are really, really heavy. But I also want to talk to you about going back to catalogs, right? Here, here is a journal. Right, the journal was is published at Hampton University. Hampton use Hampton has a museum, just like many of our uh, HBCUs do have fine art museums. I, if you're if you have children, if you yourself work there, or you have children that that attend the schools, or you live near one, it would be really a good a good experience to go and visit some of those museums because they have some really great, rare, phenomenal work by truly gifted artists. But I wanted to talk to you about the International Art Journal. I believe if history is, if I, if I have my history correct, I believe that Dr. Dr. Samela Lewis had a lot to do with birthing this, this journal series, going back to the 60s. Listen, this is an excellent reference tool. I actually have the entire set up until a couple of years ago, so I need to update the my, my outstanding issues. But this is also an excellent resource, is that resource to have this one. I also have a series of catalogs by the Hanks Gallery in Santa Monica. California here features it's it's somewhat of features works from ex different exhibit exhibits that have been um, that have been in place at the gal at the Hanks Gallery in Santa Monica Mes met Mr. Hanks virtually He's, um, very supportive and, and and believe in pouring in to collectors and artists alike so uh, a shout out to him. There are plates in these books from different exhibitions. Uh, Phoebe Beasley, Walter Williams, Artist Lane, Sargent um, Johnson, Meta Warwick, Phil Fuller. And so I, I keep catalogs as well. Like I said before, I think I have a number of catalogs from the Swan, out, uh, Swan Galleries when they were publishing their catalogs for upcoming auctions so and exhibits. So it's always good to have even your catalogs programs, brochures, as a part of your, your reference arsenal. Now, one more, couple more things that I think I've done. The purpose of me kind of sharing this with you is to share with you that you can really get wrapped up into all things art. Do I know Everything there is to know, do I know every artist, every time I go to a session or I get a call or email, do you know this artist? Do you know this work? No, I don't. I don't know every artist out there. I don't know every work that's out there. I don't know every 
um, exhibition that's out there and everything that's going on, on in these continental United States. Um, but I have reference materials and not just reference materials in hard copy, but also sites that I go to on the internet where I can get all the information I need to be as informed as I can be at that time. I believe when it comes to acquiring art and being as knowledgeable about art and artists and medium and what fuels them and, and, and what their beginnings were, what, what their journey has been is possible. Now, Sheila, you're going to say, is that always possible if you're going to an exhibit or you're going to a art show and you just see something you like? No, it's not always possible. You, you know, you buy in the moment because you like the piece and there's something that allows you to be drawn to that piece. All right. So I'm saying if you're if you're developing, if you're into collection management, right, if you're working through ensuring your work. If you're working through preparing for an ex preparing for an exhibit exhibit to which you've been invited, or preparing to participate in an auction, it's always good to have your materials at your disposal at your disposal so you can do that work. Yes, you can find a lot of work online. Um, there are also websites that I participate for valuation per in which I um, subscribe for valuation purposes, but not everything is available online without a price, right? A subscription price. So I am excited to have my reference materials. Now, here's the one thing that I will share with you um, that I even have my own book. Many of you know that I have published my own book about my journey, um, Wondrous Works. And in here, I feature information and I, I talk about my journey as a collector, as well as 70 um, images of featuring 70 uh, images of works from my own collection. And the interesting thing about this, it is my journey. Everybody's journey is unique. No one's journey is exactly the same. But I, I wanted to share this with you. And this is also available, but I also keep this in my library. So I keep my own book in my library to go tap back to for time to time as a reference material. Last point. Last point is the Journal of the Print World. Now there's another, there's another resource that I think is available online. Uh, it's called Black Art in America. Black Art in America has its own magazine. It's, uh, it's being run by artist Najee Dorsey. Uh, out of out of Georgia, but there's uh, and so definitely he is he and his periodical his publication is a strong a very strong re uh, source of reference. Journal of the Print World. It is a New Hampshire journal that's in newspaper format. Um, I've been featured in about three of the three different editions of this journal. Journal one has just been released this past. Uh, this month in January for winter 2023. So I have an article in there about the late, extraordinary, legendary master uh, abstractionist artist, Sam Gilliam. But prior to that, I had uh, somewhat a, a, a piece of work or an article featured in the fall edition 2022 um, in Journal of the Print World. This journal is comes out of, I believe, New Hampshire. What I like about this journal, though, is that I've, and, and I have been a subscriber of this journal. What I like about this journal is there's so much information in here about art in general, about the art genre in, in general. I'm, excuse me, I'm tongue tied. Um, American art, uh, continental art, European art, mostly American art, though. And there are galleries featured in here. There are print shops featured in here. There's information about upcoming auctions and exhibitions in here. It's a lot of good information in here. And I would encourage any of you to really look for this journal, again, a newspaper format, and consider, consider subscribing to it. There's a lot of good information. Um, I didn't really before when I when I first started subscribing, I wouldn't list, look at in detail a number of the different ads that were available in here. But when I realized, I was like, okay, there's some, up, some upcoming auctions coming up that haven't even been placed in 
the various auction portals. So this gives me a heads up on how I can plan uh, to participate in various auctions out there. So again, wanted to just share with you um, the importance of having those reference materials. Now, uh, what I also know is that there are a number of museums and a number of artists in their own right that are developing their resumes that are developing what they call the retrospectives, which are articles about their work, essays about their work, uh, their own sense of journaling about their, their journey as a collector, and then images or plates of their work as well. Just like, uh, just like Jacob Lawrence, the one wrote one about Jacob Lawrence, um, I think the Chicago Institute of Art um, published a retrospective on Charles White a couple of years ago, and even that one is out of print, and so you can only find that. I think Chicago Institute of Art doesn't even have that no, in, in their inventory any longer. So I know that I, like a couple of other folks, have, have, cop have purchased a couple of different copies of that and so that will be available on the website as we refresh and add to our store on on the wondrous works website uh, Pon larry poncho brown i think uh latter part of 22 came out with his retrospective that i understand is doing very very well he has a journey that has spanned more than 30 years and so all all, all of all of his journey and that work much of his work is, is featured in that book. There's Dennis Forbes, who's another uh, uh, artist enthusiast, if you will, that has published a number of books on African-American art, and it, that is still available. And, and interestingly enough, there are certain galleries, like Michael Rosenfeld Gallery, that actually have published books on Benny Andrews, on, on Charles White. I think a number of those have sold out. Uh, on Huey Lee Smith, on different artists, on, on um, who else is he published on? Because uh, I have some in here. There are a number of different artists that have been featured in, okay, yeah, Charles White. There are a number of different artists that have uh, been featured in, and, and they've published on uh, works by those artists in the Michael Roosevelt Gallery. They have a, a publishing arm where they have featured books about them. And, I, and I'm looking for them because I've seen them all down here. I have a number of them. And, and, and interestingly enough, um, while I'm scanning real quick for that, because I don't know why I became fix fixated on that, um, Artists, they, there's been some publishing of, uh, oh, there it is. There have been some publishing on Sam Gilliam's work. And they published, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So Michael Rosenfeld, I remember, published also, I think, a book or two on Norman Lewis's work. So again, hey, look, take a look. Um, we go out there and, and reach out to me if you have questions about this. We will place this segment on our blog page in on on the on the new refreshed re rebooted website. Um, hey, look! I'm so excited to share because I've been wanting to do this a long time uh, to share information about this library of mine that has become crucial in my journey to me and my journey as a collector. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, go to my website, send me a message. Um, I have, I'm listed on Facebook, please reach out to me that way. Um, you can also, I'm on Instagram under Wondrous Works 378, you can reach out to me that way. And also, um, you know, they're, they're in the, as we begin the blogging process, you know, YouTubing, subscribe to the YouTube page and you can reach out to me that way. So there's numbers of ways where you can reach out to me with questions about books, about collecting. I look forward to sharing more information with you. That's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about 2023. I'll be starting my classes at Sotheby's and as I learn, I hope to share that learning with you so you get the benefit of that. Hey, listen, um, have a wonderful wonderful 2023 and hey let's continue this art journey together have a good one